like virtually all New Englanders, Adams was profoundly opposed to slavery and considered it a gross violation both of American Republican principles and of Christian principles as well. But he also considered slavery to be, in effect, a settled issue. The Constitution had been silent on it. States were free to do as they wish. There was essentially nothing that the federal government could do or, from Adams's point of view, should do about slavery. His views only began to change in 1820. 1820 was the era of what we now call the Missouri Compromise. And what happened then was there were then 22 states, 11 free and 11 slave. And Missouri petitioned to gain entrance to the Union as a slave state, which of course would have destabilized the balance. And that provoked a huge debate. Also, Missouri was far enough north that there was a strong case to be made that it should be entered as a, a free state, because all the other free states were at that latitude or above. And a tremendous debate broke out in the Congress. And uh, Adams, of course, at this time, he was Secretary of State. He had no, no place in that debate. Uh, but he, he watched that debate. And he felt the debate was being dominated by the Southerners, who then had many highly regarded, eloquent speakers. And it was deeply frustrating to him. And he wished that he could speak, but he couldn't. Instead, he raised the issue in the cabinet. And the cabinet at that time consisted almost entirely of Southerners, of slaveholders. This was the cabinet of James Monroe. And Adams was slapped down. Afterwards, he took a walk down Pennsylvania Avenue, probably only a few blocks from where we are today, with John Calhoun, who was the Secretary of War. John Calhoun would go on to become the great ideologue, intellectual justifier of slavery. But Adams had a lot of regard for Calhoun. Calhoun was a brilliant man. And Adams, at that time, considered Calhoun to be a person of tremendous intellectual integrity. And Adams continued to talk, as was his wont. And Calhoun listened to him and said, we well, you know those are, those are very noble principles. But where I come from, we think those principles only apply to white people, not to black people. And Adams went home that night. Adams had a diary. He kept a diary every day of his life. It was quite extraordinary. For me, you know, a great resource for someone in my position. And he would write down, sometimes almost verbatim, the conversations that happened that day if he thought they were important. So he, he um, went back home and at some point began to write. And he was thinking about the fact that a man as gifted as Calhoun, whom he admired so much, could sincerely hold views that Adams found repellent and, at least to him, self-evidently false. There was a larger truth in this, one that had not presented itself to Adams until now. Transcribing his train of thought as it came to him, Adams wrote that the practice of slavery taints the very sources of moral principle. It perverts human reason and reduces men endowed with logical powers to maintain that slavery is sanctioned by the Christian religion. The impression produced upon my mind by the progress of this discussion is that the bargain between freedom and slavery contained in the Constitution of the United States is morally and politically vicious. This was an astonishing conclusion for a man who had been raised from the earliest moment of consciousness to regard union as the supreme good, who had devoted his career as a diplomat and a politician to defending the integrity of the United States against foreign and domestic threats. Adams was a Burkean conservative who feared and abhorred revolutionary upheaval. Yet he had reasoned himself into a, into a position that was too honest to reason himself out of. Later that year, as the negotiations over Missouri continued, uh, the state a legislature passed a law that banned free people of color from the state. Literally said, even if you were a free person, you cannot come into the state if you were a person of color. And this enraged Adams. And I think maybe kind of burst the last stays that were holding in his, his deepest feelings. 